Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Sunday Messages. This episode is going to be a little bit different because I'm not doing a full PTA episode with this. However, I was sent a really dense admission for the advice column. And so I want to pick that apart a little bit more and make it its own episode because there are many different pieces and I don't want the episode to feel too cluttered. So I'm going to read the submission piece by piece and go through my insights piece by piece. Before we get started, I want to remind you that Clown, my most recent creation for those of you who are creatives, artists, people who have things that they want to bring into the world, entrepreneurs, business owners, anyone who is looking to feel relief in creative expression, just feel free in creative expression. Clown is for you. That is for sure. I have really oriented this to support you around fear of failure, self-sabotage, holding yourself back if you are really struggling with the creative process and the creative flow. If you hold yourself back all the time and you're just stuck in that thought loop and you're like, I know there's a better way for me to have a relationship with my own creativity and I am just stuck in creativity paralysis, Clown is for you. Okay, so if you would like to join me, we are having that on the 28th. It is a live program. You get a lecture and a Q&A. It is dense, it is meaty, and my entire 21, 2021 has been setting me up to teach this to you and for you. So if you would like to join me, the ticket price is $333. It's going to be dense, it's going to be amazing, it's going to be magical, and I cannot wait to hear about all the breakthroughs that you have around creativity. And I'm so excited to have you inside. The link will be in the description box or it will be on exhealing.com slash clown. Keeping it simple. Okay, let's move on. Let's move into this advice column. Okay, so here's the first piece. How do I go about healing emotional blocks that prevent me from trusting the unknown? I believe I am a co-creator of my life and that some things are simply predetermined per my soul contract here in this lifetime. Firstly, one thing that I would correct here is that you are a bit too heavy on the block thing. So here's where a lot of people get tripped up. The idea of a block. Eh, I don't see anything as being a block. What we're really talking about is an old pattern, paradigm, thought form that is no longer serving you. So as that one exists, you want to start laying the tracks for something new. You have to do both at the same time. It's not that a block is something that creates this sensation that it's immovable, that it's not something you can actually work through. And if you focus more on block, 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 then you're just going to find more blockages. You're not actually going to find relief in that. So I wouldn't actually focus on healing emotional blocks. It's like you're focusing on the wrong thing. Instead, I would recommend that you anchor into using the unknown, not even trusting it. You don't have to trust it. You've already said you know you're a co-creator. Okay, so all the juicy stuff is in the unknown. If it's not unknown, that means it's predictable. And if what you have experienced as being predictable isn't what you want, you actually need the unknown to get to the next place. Okay? So that's number one. Also, go listen to my episode on trust. That's the other thing that I would recommend. In terms of the predetermined piece, I see what you're saying, but don't think that with the tone of I'm a slave to my soul contract. Don't create bondage from the idea of a soul contract. Look at it this way. 
you've had other lifetimes. We all have. We've all been on earth before, yada, yada. Okay, we've done this thing before. We remember things from those previous lifetimes on earth. And from those previous lifetimes, we created desires. That is what gave birth to some of the things that we're experiencing now or potentially even where you were born or the type of family that you were born into or the wounds that you experienced because it created different desires. So that has more to do with the predetermination or like souls that you're really familiar with that you've met before that might help you or shake you up or shift you into a different perspective. There's all different things that, sure, it can bleed through past experiences, but this doesn't mean that you don't have control over your personal relationship and experience to those things. So I just wanted to make that distinction so you're not falling into powerlessness over the idea of what you could say karma, as in karmic information from past experiences or creations that you already set into motion before you even came onto earth. Okay, here's the second piece. When I experience a a dark night of the soul about twice a year, I regress to a hopeless state of not having the willpower or desire to move forward living life because it seems like the seeds I plant and water with inner child healing, compassion with my soul tribe, cord cutting, blah, 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 um, of all of the different practices with good intentions is not enough for my manifestations to materialize. Okay, so let me make one thing really clear about practices. Practices are incredibly supportive, right? Whatever you like. There's a gazillion options to choose from, but the purpose of those practices is not to manifest. The purpose of the practices is to get a grip on your energy and have more traction over what you're doing energetically. Manifestation, you're already manifesting. You already have tons of things that have materialized and things that are going on. And as a matter of fact, feelings are also a manifestation in and of themselves. So you're not doing the practice so that something can drop in on a 3D level. You're doing the practice to get energetically correct and energetically prepare yourself for the things that you're receiving. However, where I see a lot of people have issues is you're putting too much of the power in the practice rather than yourself and your own energy. And so then you start measuring the things around you and it completely knocks you off your game. So it's like, I want this thing and I'm doing all these practices and then I'm seeing it's not here and you drop your energy because you're not focused on maintaining the energy, which that's the game. If you want to know, manifestation is always, 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 always an energetic game, right? Table, that level of density is just energy. If you were to take it down to a microscopic level, you would just see empty space inside of this table, ironically enough. It's just empty space. It's just energy. So manifestation from a 3D perspective is always going to be energetic. I would argue that everything's energetic. (laughs) So if you are constantly dropping the energy then you're not aligned. That's not what alignment looks like. Alignment is having energy that is circulating within you that does not have any contradiction to it. That's what leads to the 3D piece. So what you think is that, oh, I'm doing this practice to manifest. The practice is what creates the manifestation. No, it's not. The energy that you have in your body, what you're circulating, what you're radiating, is what leads to the 3D stuff. Okay, so that's what leads to the material things that you want to experience or the relationships that you want to have. It's not the practices. Take the practices completely out of it. Those are just supporting your energetic correction and creations. 
So if you're not maintaining the state, if you're not holding it, then you're just not seeing the manifestation through. The manifestation is a done deal. It already exists. All you're doing is getting yourself into a, a frequency that is congruent with the thing that you want, which is why there's a lag time. That's why there is a gap in between what you want right now and then when the thing happens and when it drops in. You need that time and space to correct your energy as in get it get it on get to the same radio station and then it comes into place. But the thing is a manifestation is one instant. As soon as you have a manifestation, you're going to be on to the next thing. As soon as you have a career, you're going to say, what's next? As soon as you have a partner, you're going to say, what's next? As soon as the money comes in, you're going to say, well, I want more. It never stops. It's never going to stop. So the satisfaction has to be in the emotional state that you're achieving, not the 3D stuff, because you're, you're never going to stop creating. It never ends. Manifesting never, ever, ever stops. So if you can just remind yourself that you're always going to be in a gap forever. A manifestation, like the thing actually arriving, is a split second of the experience. So if you get too hung up on that, then you're going to, you know, something will come into your space and you're going to be happy for one second rather than enjoying yourself for those many months or years ahead of time. And it it just doesn't lead to a satisfying life experience. So you want to keep the long game in mind. You're playing a long game. You're not playing a short game. And so if we were just here to create one thing and then be done, I mean, that, that kind of defeats the purpose of life. Life is an adventure. There's a lot of things that are going on. There's a lot of things we want to do and a lot of things that we want to create. And while you're aiming at something right now, you're not going to stop there. So you've got to enjoy the creative process or get yourself into a state that is actually enjoyable now as much as you possibly can. Otherwise, if you don't do that, You're going to be not having a good time. A manifestation comes through. You're happy for one second and then you're going to be miserable again. That's not fun. That's you're not going to enjoy the full depth of life and experience if that's what you're after. This is we want to look at the whole process, really. So remember, every time your ego is like, okay, I did my meditation today. Where's my treat? I did that thing. I did my journaling today. Where is the treat? I want the good. Your ego will miss the point, right? It, it has you wrapped up in this idea that there's a destination. There's no destination, with any of this. It's constant refinement. It's refinement for the rest of your life. That's the fun part. But you have to get yourself to the point where the the treats, if you will, the manifestations are a consequence of how good of a time are you having and how receptive are you to them. If you play on the way to the things, then You have a playful life. You have a fun, expansive life. You know, but white knuckling your way is far less pleasant. If you are viewing personal practices as a way to get something from it or like manifest faster, I would suggest laying off. Get off the practices and focus only on, does this feel good? Am I enjoying myself right now? Do I like this practice? Is it it helping me to feel my best and become the ve- the best version of myself. 
And if the answer is yes, the practices are supporting you, they're, they're feeling good, you're having a good time, you can access that bliss point when you're in it, then that's amazing. You should keep doing it. But don't look at practices as a chore that are going to lead to a reward. That's not good. Practices definitely shouldn't feel like a chore that you dread doing or that you're disappointed by. Definitely not. Okay, here's the next piece of the message, specifically with career and love in terms of manifestations. <clears throat> I affirm that I am happy and whole on my own, but still feel lonely because I can't connect with people emotionally how I need to in order to be to feel seen and heard. It's like it's too low or too high of a frequency because of my spiritual inclination compared to others that keeps me from being able to connect. Even with multiple therapists now, I can't seem to get the breakthrough that I'm praying for. I'm starting to feel like I'm sick in the head psychiatrically, as if my gifts and powers like the Claire's or intuition are just curses. Maybe this is a thing of patience, but I have a history of people leaving me hanging and letting me down, so I become I became independent early on. This makes it hard to lean into the unknown because of a lack of stability and certainty makes me question why I do this life thing at all, and then down the rabbit hole I go. The first thing, and this is where I would say the vast majority of us begin, is that there is too much dependency on the external. Because really all of this is the same thing. It's I need the practices to get this material thing or to have this experience outside of myself. I I need this career thing. It's outside of myself in order to feel fulfilled and satisfied. I need other people to get me and see me and hear me in order for me to feel satisfied. I, I need my therapist to say something right so that I can have this breakthrough that I've conjured up in my mind that I think I need. The reason why these things are creating so much pain is because they keep pointing back to yourself. So the direction that you're being pointed and guided to is actually having the ability to replenish yourself and access your own source so that all of the other things reorganize in a way that's pleasing to you. But a therapist isn't going to teach you how to do that, (laughs) right? So therapists are really great for things like I, I need someone to hold space and guide me through a traumatic memory so that I can remember that I'm safe and and teach my body how to stay regulated for my nervous system to become balanced. A lot of therapy is great for things like that or hammering out some communication issues or like therapy is great for a lot of things. But what I'm hearing from you is that you are desperately seeking all of these things outside of yourself in order to access this feeling of fulfillment. And it's never going to happen from the places that you're digging. So that's why every time you start digging for something, you're finding problem, 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 problem. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. Maybe I'm too spiritual. Maybe if this weren't the case, then people would get me, then I would feel connected. No, 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 no. The way that it actually is, is that when you become so full of your own source and really find things that bring you back to that. So in order to do this, you have to get off of the problem. And right now you're just getting immersed in problems, right? Like that's that's what all of this is. I, I can't have the breakthrough. I think that there's something wrong with me. I don't want to rely on anyone because they're not dependable and I can't trust them and it makes me really nervous. I don't I don't want to feel bad if if they leave me hanging. And the thing is, when it comes to all of this, what I'm picking up on is you probably got started with intuition really, really early, right? You said you found me when you were 17. First of all, I am so jealous. I wish I had me when I was 17. Oh my God. And you're 21 now. 
my personal take on this, my personal read is that you you discovered all of these things. You opened Pandora's box, okay? And so now, because that's open, you can't go backwards, right? You can't understand your co-creative power and then undo that and go back to a time when the box was closed. And so what this is really pushing you into is coming back to yourself. And I, I don't have... I don't have very many words to describe this with, but basically the way that you get directed back to yourself and your own source is by nothing else working. So when everything else comes up dry and is ineffective and isn't working and you're not getting satisfaction from external things, they have to cap out on what they're actually able to provide you, and it pushes you back to yourself again and again and again. And it is the most redundant and maddening experience ever. But I can tell you that it's going to click. At some point, what I'm saying in this podcast will make sense. I don't know when it's going to land for you, but I promise you it will at some point because you're going to realize It doesn't matter how much someone hears you or sees you. It doesn't matter how much someone is into you or if the relationship exists. It doesn't matter if you have a career. None of that matters if you're not feeling connected to yourself and your source. It's going to be completely vapid. And the more that those things come up without your connection to yourself, the more that you're going to say something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. So... I would say it's better that these things don't come to you now when you're not able to feel yourself and replenish yourself energetically so that you can practice this, you can anchor into it now, and then when these things come through, because they will, they will, they have to, you're you're 21 then you will actually be in a state where it feels satisfying and fulfilling. If you had a career right now, but you were feeling empty and not seen and not heard and all of these other things were in the way, it wouldn't be satiating to you. It would feel empty. It would still feel like something is wrong. To be clear, this is not a matter of Oh, I'm just affirming to myself. I'm I'm lying to myself that I'm satisfied on my my own and that I'm complete and happy and whole. Blah blah blah. Mm, well, that's not entirely true. We love having relationships with other people. We're social creatures. We like connecting. We like doing things that make us feel purposeful and excited to show up for something that we love every day. These are extensions of what we have going on internally, really. So the quality of your relationships are going to be directly correlated to the quality of your inner game. The satisfaction of your career is going to be directly correlated to the satisfaction and the quality of your inner game. Everything around you is going to be a reflection. So I think right now you're running into walls like that's not working, that's not working, that that isn't satisfying, that's not delivering what I think it will. And what I have to say is good. That's expediting this whole process where now you are forced to focus within and actually tap into Again, I keep saying it, but but it's the your own source. You have to tap into that and feel full of that. Have the ability to fill yourself first so that everything else is an extension of that. It can't be done backwards. Because you're already trying to do it backwards and it's not working. And nobody, well... Nobody else has any answers for you. You're, you make sense to me. All of this 
is piece of cake in my mind. I'm like, oh yeah, I've totally felt that. I completely understand that. You definitely make sense. No, nah, nothing's wrong with you. You make sense. I get it. But don't start taking score right now when you're in the middle of some upheaval. That's the best piece of information that I can give you. It's just that you keep getting directed back to the inner game. And the inner game is not achieved with practices. Practices can get you there. Again, like if you're really able to quiet the mind and meditation and just tap into that bliss point, if you get, well, I mean, I call it the pocket. If you get into that pocket where you're just getting juiced up by your own connection and you're overflowing from that space, oh man, yeah, that'll definitely move some things around for you. But keep in mind, a lot of this, you don't actually want to come through when you're not in a state that actually feels satisfying. You want to feel satisfied as these things drop in, otherwise you're gonna miss them. That's the real thing. Your glasses will be foggy until you actually get yourself in a good state and then all of a sudden the world will sparkle as you look at it, essentially. So the real thing is that You can do this in any circumstance or situation. You don't need external pieces to start moving around in order to access this. But you have to start somewhere. So you're you're starting here and now with what you have going on. But I would suggest that you don't point at things outside of yourself and expect satisfaction and then get frustrated when it's not there and then say, I can't do this. That's not what's going on. I promise you that is not what's going on. You are just in a season of learning to fill yourself up, access satisfaction, feel into gratitude, mastering feeling states that are supportive to you. Really go there with yourself first. And then from an overflowing state is where all of the other goods will come out to play. That's where all the treats come in. And then you'll actually be able to see them and appreciate them and receive them and have fun with them. And you're not going to be coming from this contracted, I'm afraid of them. So that's the real thing is there is no problem. It's just redirecting your focus to learning how to properly fill your tank. That's really it. Now, the other thing that you mentioned, the lack of stability and certainty makes me question, why do I do this life thing at all? Kind of like that existential crisis piece. Now, if you're alluding to, I feel like I'm I'm suicidal, I don't want to be on earth anymore, I probably should do a whole other episode on suicide as its own topic and go in depth there because I definitely, I have a lot to say on that topic. So I'm not going to unpack it fully here. But here's what I'll say. You would not have any point coming onto earth and being embodied and bother incarnating at all if there was no negative feeling. You didn't come and incarnate and say, okay, yeah, I'm going to come into that body and there's never going to be an issue ever. There's never going to be any problem and I'm never going to feel bad and I'm never going to have anything to work on. It's just going to be basically no difference between this ethereal energy dust that I am now and going down onto earth onto the material plane. No, of course, of course, you came here so that you would have these defining feelings and experiences and and major questions, but I don't actually think what you're after is to, to not feel or not have any type of duality in your life. You didn't come here for that. Nobody comes down to earth for there to be no distinction. 
in feeling states or no distinction in creations, what I think you actually want is to find a way to enjoy your life. What I think you want is to have really good energetic management and emotional control or rather Uh, regulation of your emotional states and being able to ride the waves with more grace and ease in a way that doesn't take you out so intensely. I think you want a satisfying, fulfilling experience on earth. That's what I actually think this is about, which is why you're in this tug of war of like, I really want this stuff. I really want to have these experiences and also simultaneously fuck this place. This is pointless. I get that so much. I really, really do. And to that, what I will say is I I don't think it's so much about patience. That word can get kind of sticky and has a lot of other connotations and frustration around it. But what I would say is really try on the perspective of there is no completion, there is no finished, there is no destination. Really, you've got to let go of this destination thing because that would imply that you're not going to create anymore, you're not going to desire more, and that there isn't more to experience or more, that there's not more. And the simple reality is that there is always, always more, and there's always better, and there's always more creating, and there's, it, it keeps going eternally, So start making peace with where you are and know that you can absolutely tap into and practice and get better and better at staying regulated and feeling into fulfillment and accessing your own source and really getting practiced at these things. You can do that right now. There's no waiting for that. There's no waiting for a manifestation in order to do that. That's something that you're going to get really, really good at. And more and more things are going to happen and they're going to drop in when the timing is right, where you can see it and feel it and receive it and appreciate it. And you're in a state that works for that too. And so this, you can look at this season that you're experiencing as preparation, you're nesting, you're getting ready you are refining your skills. You, you know, think about it more as the the general ed version of life. And see if that helps you loosen up on this whole thing. Because I, I just see this as you're really wanting a sense of completion and finality. And the thing is, when the career and the partner drop in, you're going to want more. There's going to be even more refinement that comes from being in that partnership where there's other mm, feelings and experiences that probably aren't pleasant that you're going to want to work on even further. Then there's communication work. Then there's connection. Then there's more intimacy or more free time or all of these other cans of worms that are going to bust open as soon as you're in that container of a relationship. And the same thing with your career. You're going to want more things or you're going to want more creative expression or you're going to want more independence or you're going to want more of this activity or less of that or you're going to want better relationships with coworkers, or more or less of something or different hours or more freedom or more schedule or more consistency or more money. It never fucking stops. So if you just make peace with that and understand this is the game you're playing and it gets to be a good one and you get to enjoy this, you really, really do. That to me will make this much more palatable for you. So that is all. I'm in full agreement for well-being all around emotional foundations, and wish fulfillment, and accessing your personal power, for sure. Thank you so much for submitting your question. 
I know this has helped many, many, many people who also struggle with these topics. And I am sending you all the love, all the support, and I really hope some of this landed for you. Have a beautiful week. I will talk to you wonderful people later. And have a good one. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Have a good one.